Good afternoon. I'm George Smith, Managing Director, North Asia for Orbis International. On behalf of Orbis, I want to say how honored we are to host the China Africa Neglected Tropical Disease and Prevention of Blindness Summit. This important summit is part of a series of events we, we have taken part in to strengthen the partnership between China and Africa with a goal to help eliminate preventable blindness. I want to thank you and tell you how happy we are to have two of our strongest partners and longtime friends of Orbis as co-hosts for this event. Professor He Wei, founder and chairman of He Vision Group, board member for the International Council of Ophthalmology and deputy chief of the China National Prevention of Blindness Committee. He has been central force behind our work across countries and continents and the person who first initiated these China-Africa events. Together, He Vision Group and Orbis have been partnering on projects in China for nearly two decades. And Professor Wang Ning Li, Chief of the China National Prevention of Blindness Committee. Professor, Professor Ning Li has been one of the strongest advocates for prevention of blindness in China and also supporting Orbis's work there. We are just completing a national level project focusing on building capacity at county level hospitals with the PBL committee and are now planning a second phase focusing on diabetes and diabetic retinopathy. Professor Wang Ning Li will be central to the success of this project and its national impact. Neglected Tropical Disease Day and this summit gives us a chance to share and celebrate the work that has been done to eliminate trachoma and to look forward to our collective work together. Finally, I would like to thank our Orbis CyberSight team for their technical support in supplying this terrific platform. I would now like to turn the podium over to Professor He Wei. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, George. Dear George Smith, Professor Wang Yi Li, and uh, distinguished friends at home and abroad, Hello, everyone. It's my great honor to be invited to this China Africa NTT Day and the Prevention Blindness Summit. On behalf of the China National Training Center for the Prevention and the Treatment Blindness, and on behalf of the He Ai Specialty Hospital, I would like to extend my facilitations to this forum. Although China and Africa are far apart from each other, China-Africa friendship is stable and becomes even stronger as time goes by. For many years, He Ai Specialist Hospital as a training center designated by ICO and the China National Training Center for the prevention and the treatment of blindness has actively participated in the international cooperation on blindness prevention and provide human resources training to the African nations. We will take this online forum as an opportunity to continue to build the broader academic exchange platform, seeking new ideas and expand new ways for the future academical research and the international cooperation. We're willing to jointly cooperate with experts, scholars, and friends at home and abroad to contribute to the development of, of global eye health. Lastly, I wish the forum an outstanding success. I wish all the dear guests friends, good health, wonderful work, and a happy life. Thank you. We expect all the attendees to leave us messages through the message board at the bottom, where we have a question and answer session at the end. At the end. So let's turn the podium over to Professor Ning Li. Hi, dear George Smith, distinguished guest. 
and my dear friend at home and bride. Hello, everyone. This is a great pleasure for me to participate with the China African NTD Day and the Prevention of the Blindness uh, Summit. I would like to take this opportunity to express our sincerely thanks to our host, Obis International, for this earnest invitation. On behalf of the China National Committee for the Prevention of the Blindness, I would like to uh, extend my warm congratulations on the summit opening. Here is the eternal uh, pursuit and innate right of the human kind, and the significant part humans hears as well. As the chief of China National Committee for the Prevention of the Blindness, I have worked in this field for nearly 40 years and witnessed the changes in the spectrum of the blindness eye disease and the improvement of the technology in diagnosis and the treatment in China. I sincerely hope that China's successful experience in the prevention and the treatment of blindness can help the innovation, the development in African countries. This summit gathers the global wisdom online. We hope everyone can have deep and fully communication so that academic thoughts collide with more sparks. I would like to work with the expertise and the friend at the home and the abroad to promote the global health business high quality development and uh, contribute with <clears throat> wisdom and strength. Finally, I hope this summit uh, completely success. Thank you all, all our friends. Thank you. Thank you, Nin Li. As we all know, over the past 70 years, China has made remarkable achievements in the prevention treatment of NTD, especially for the elimination of a trachoma in 2015. Firstly, we sincerely invite Professor Ninli to share the successful experience in eliminating blinding trachoma in China. Ninli. So thank you. The organization committee gave me the opportunity to talk on the elimination of the blindness trachoma in China. Actually, here is the experience sharing with our friend. So, according to the history of the trachoma control in China, I would like to divide the histories into the three periods. The first period is a pandemic period, the high prevalence in China. And the second, second period is the, we are the action mission period. And finally, is our conclusions, summaries of the elimination of the blindness trachoma as a public health issue. So let's go to the first part. Let's be back to the year 1950s. So, in that year, that is just after the World War II and the Civil War in China, China, China has a very bad conditions because of weak economy, poor agents, and the trachoma in that time is a leading cause of the blindness in China. In some area, the rate of the blindness caused by the trachoma is as higher as the more than 35%. For the average, it is around the 20% of the, of the, the blindness uh, due to the trachoma. 
And let's see the prevalence in that time. In the Northwestern China, the prevalence of the trachoma is so high, almost come to the 100%. Even in the central part of the China, the trachoma prevalence is come to the almost 60%. So the trachoma in that time is a big, severe challenge for our uh, health, uh, eye health. And it is the leading cause of the blindness in China in that moment. So the Chinese government put the pride on the trachoma uh, control from the 1950s to 1999. So the government first put the trachoma control on the highly priorities just as the one of the six, 60 major tasks in the national development program. And the government make the specific missions just like the national trachoma control target reform movements missions. And in that time, not just China, in the whole world, we don't know what caused the trachoma, what is the pathway of the transmission, what kind of medication should be the best. So in China, there is two famous scientists and doctors. They are work together to try to isolate the, the uh, etiology of the trachoma. Finally, in the 1955, both of them worked together, uh, separated the first trachoma virus. Actually, it is not the virus, it is the trachomatis chlamydium. And this is the first time the human beings understand what caused the trachoma. So the WHO gave the, this first discovery of the trachoma chlamydium, the name T5055. And because uh, both of the people's uh, contributions on the discovery of the pathogens, classification of the transmission rules, and the pathway of the repeat infections, and the uh, identification of the sensitivity drugs, the International Trichoma Gold Medal come to the both of them. And after this, there are several missions started in China. And first, we set up the training teams and the training the, our doctors to, uh, to do the trachoma preventions. And we just uh, take the documents, the uh, guidelines and the standards from the WHO. And this uh, classification of the trachoma is from the WHO. We translated the English into the Chinese. That is uh, widely used in uh, China in the mission of the uh, trachoma controls. Now let's see, uh, after the 13 years, in the 1987, we did the first national sample severe of the disabled, disabled person. We found the blindness caused by the trachoma. It is down to the third leading cause. And uh, in the, uh, let's see, uh, the last part is uh, our missions, elimination of the blindness uh, trachoma as the public health issue. Actually, that is uh, one kind of one of the efforts on the Vision 2020 initiative. So in the 1999, the WHO conjunct, uh, conjuncted with the Chinese government. There is a Kunming meeting. During the Kunming meeting, the meeting 
collect the data from the different uh, part of the China and the meta, uh, meta analysis of the trachoma epidemiology was analysis. And from these uh, studies, we found the active trachoma was dramatically controlled, but we still lay, uh, have uh, a quite big number of the trachoma trichosis. Uh, from the estimations, in that time, we had almost six million trachoma trichosis. So continu uh, continuously, the Chinese government and the uh, Chinese ophthalmologists work together, follow the guideline from the WHO. We use the C4 strategies for our trichomas control. So the year 2003, we rejoined the meeting WHO's Global Alliance for Elimination of the Blindness Trichoma in Geneva. And from this meeting, uh, we, uh, we talked and we uh, give the data about uh, the oversee, uh, the result from the uh, survey about the trichoma in China. And we get the grant from the WHO. We started to do the, one of the pilot study in the four key provinces. So from the pilot studies, we found that the TF dramatically reduced. And also the rate of the trichosis also reduced dramatically. So we get the idea that if we uh, do some things, do the last efforts, maybe we can come to our target, the target of the elimination of the trachoma in China. So here, thanks to WHO and the Chinese government, the Lion NGO support us. We start the site first China action. This project is the third phase. We put our, our focus on the elimination of the blindness trachoma in China. This project should be finished by the year 2016. So here, thanks the doctors, the scientists from the WHO, Rinuskov, Mariotis, and the rest of the doctors from WHO, and the people from the Lion NGO, and the doctors from the different area of the China. So after two years' work for the evaluation, screening, treatment, finally we got the result. The TF, the prevalence of the TF is quite lower. It's just 0.196%. It's really below the 5%. And to see the trach the, uh, the rate of the trachoma, of uh, the trachosis also come to the very low prevalence. It's come to the 0.004%. So from this result, we get the conclusions. Blinding trachoma is no longer a public health problem in the, in the China and in the year 2014. And in the year 20, 2015, at the WHA, the meetings in Geneva, the over direct leaping of the National Health and the Family Planning Commission officially announced that in the year 2014, the China meet the WHO's requirement of the blending trachoma emulation. That is the great achievement we got the, for the trachoma elimination. So this is a certific uh, certification officials letter from the WHO. 
That is a validation of the elimination of the trachoma as a public health problems in China. So I uh, will end my uh, talk, but for the trachoma elimination in China, it's not only one person's uh, contribution. It's not uh, only one organization's contributions. It is uh, several generations people's work together and uh, the government's uh, guideline. So finally, so what is the Chinese, uh, China's uh, experience on the trachoma controls? First, the government should put the most challenging eye health issue on the priority. And we need the help and the guidance from the WHO. And we need the NGO's support from the many aspects. And we need the international friends, just the friends from the Japan, Koyama, and the friends from the WHO, and the friends from the NGO. And we need our ophthalmologists work together, focus on the challenge. So that is uh, our experience and uh, the achievement on the elimination of the trachoma we did in China. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you very much, Yunin Li, for your excellent presentation. Next, let's welcome Professor Daniel Etiali give us a good presentation on moving forward preliminary lessons from the Vision 2020 initiative for Africa. Uh -huh. Professor Daniel has played a critical role in the eye care delivery in the Africa region. He is a finding partner of uh, Magarabi ICO Cameron Eye Institute and a former general coordinator of Vision 2020 for all of Africa. Professor Daniel is granted as emeritus and a lifetime member of executive committee and the strategic committee of the International Council of Ophthalmology. Daniel, please. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Wei, uh, for this kind of introduction. I thought that uh, as we as we just end uh, the official period of uh, Vision 2020, uh, it's not too um, early uh, to start uh, uh, looking uh, back and to learn uh, the lessons. I know that this is still very early days. Uh, and there is a lot more lessons that are going to be learned over the coming years, but I just wanted us to get started. And uh, I will be talking on, um, uh, on three key, uh, on four key areas. Uh, I will touch on the major achievements uh, uh, during Vision 2020. Then I would uh, uh, discuss um, um, how we performed against uh, Vision 2020 original uh, objectives. And then uh, I, will discuss, I will discuss um, what I still see in, in, in Africa as the remaining and ongoing challenges. And uh, then uh, I will end by suggesting uh, some of the things that uh, I believe we must do in priority uh, moving forward. So with respect to the first uh, point, uh, what have been our major achievements um, in 2020. Uh, again, one can look at it at both the global level, but uh, and also at the regional and country level. And without doubt, at both levels, our greatest achievement has been in the area of advocacy and um, awareness, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, making. Uh, at global level, uh, as you know, within a, a few years, we actually managed uh, to uh, to, to get past three major WHO uh, um, uh, um, World Health Assembly resolutions, uh, which are not always easy to get. 
but we managed to do that. At the regional and country level, uh, we did some extensive work, especially in Africa, uh, because uh, we uh, uh, held um, at the beginning uh, major Vision 2020 uh, launches uh, for French speaking and uh, English speaking. And then uh, this was followed by the, um, uh, um, the development, I mean, the, the, the organization of uh, national and regional planning workshops. And these were extensive, uh, especially in terms of data collection. Uh, here you have uh, the examples of, of, of the sort of, uh, of things we were able to do as a result of that. Uh, data collected and in each country on the availability and distribution of ophthalmic personnel in each country, um, on the uh, country performance in cataract surgery, uh, both um, at the national level, but we were even uh, able to drill down the, uh, uh, to the provincial and regional level, uh, because sometimes you may have a good uh, a number at the national level, but when you look uh, region by region, you see the disparity as you can see here on the right on the example of Tanzania, uh, where in blue you have what each region had achieved in terms of cataract surgery and uh, what uh, uh, and in red, what still remains to be done. Um, but we collected even far more information, uh, 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 for example, on, um, on training centers and human resources uh, for cataract in, in, uh, in each country. Um, we, we, we went further down uh, in collecting data in all our units in Africa, from primary uh, to tertiary. Uh, data on ophthalmologists, uh, ophthalmologist uh, uh, proficiency in surgery, in laser, and so forth. Uh, data on availability of consumables. Uh, uh, now, this is very important because uh, sometimes uh, you see uh, that uh, a given center or eye unit is not performing. But when we collected those data, we realized that some of them were not uh, performing well uh, because they did not, um, uh, uh, sometimes they will go like four to six months without any consumable. Uh, and so if you want to address these issues, it's important that you collect this type of, uh, of, uh, uh, of data. And, and of course, we also collected data on the, on the functionality of available equipment. And we discovered that many uh, were listed, but there, there were very few that were functioning well. Uh, now moving on to how did we perform against the original uh, objectives of Vision 2020. Um, uh, here you have, um, I don't know how, maybe I can move it uh, further on, okay. Yeah, here you have um, uh, what we called at the time the three-pronged uh, strategy um, um, in, the, in, in Vision 2020 implementation the control of priority blinding diseases, the development of uh, uh, human resources. And I, I, I like, I prefer uh, using the term, the development of eye care teams, because it's not just ophthalmologists, uh, it's a whole team that needs to be available if you want to really get the maximum impact. And then the third uh, strategy was putting in place uh, uh, the right infrastructure. Because if you have staff uh, and you don't have the right infrastructure, you can't achieve much. Um, now, uh, this is what we, uh, uh, we had at the end of, uh, of the official period vision. 20 years later. And as you can see in the areas of disease control, uh, like uh, our colleague from China has shared, uh, we were very successful um, in the control of trachoma. We have not yet uh, uh, got the, the certification uh, as China has got for, for, for many of, uh, of, of the African countries, but we are in a very advanced stage. And the same is true also of oncocerciasis. And uh, 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 cataract, uh, yes, we have uh, services for cataract in many countries and in most uh, eye hospitals, 
But when you look overall, uh, all the things that are dimmed in this uh, image are things for which we have not done very much. And so there's still quite a lot to do. Uh, now, moving on to the third uh, uh, aspect, which is the remaining and ongoing challenges. Um, now, uh, again, if you look at this table, I have tried to summarize those, those, those challenges. Uh, and, 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 and if you take uh, uh, only cataract uh, uh, is where we managed uh, to do um, uh, some things. Uh, but even there, the infrastructure is still not yet uh, uh, fully available. Uh, they, we still have uh, the problems of uh, skills, equipment, and supplies, and uh, there's still a need to monitor the quality uh, of surgery everywhere. But outside cataract, all the other top priorities of Vision 2020 in Sub-Saharan Africa, they, we are still almost at the beginning. Uh, and this is a major challenge because if it took us 20 years uh, to do only uh, so, so much in cataract and we are still facing huge challenges in glaucoma, diabetes, uh, childhood blindness, um, and on corrective refractive errors, uh, we, we need to rethink our strategy if we want to catch up and, and probably advance uh, qu uh, quicker. Now, here is a, 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 a good example in the area of cataract. Uh, the graph on the left, uh, this information that I collected myself, uh, is the cataract surgical rate in uh, 2007. And the draft on the, uh, on the right is uh, data uh, collected by WHO in 2017. Uh, and as you can see, the cataract surgical rate has not changed very much, uh, despite uh, the fact that, yes, some countries have, have shown some progress. But overall, even in the area of cataract where infrastructure is available, we have not moved very much. Now it becomes more critical uh, 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 if you, um, yeah, if you um, look uh, at, uh, on the one hand, what the countries are doing, and on the other hand, the, 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 the number of ophthalmologists. When we started Vision 2020, we were saying that you know, all that it will take is uh, if you have a minimum of two ophthalmologists per million population, then uh, maybe you will start achieving things. But now, you, as you can see, we have a list of many countries and it's increasing uh, of many countries that have more than two ophthalmologists per million population. And when you look at what they are achieving, it's still not enough. So what can we learn from that? Uh, we, we, uh, just training more ophthalmologists is not enough. We have to make sure uh, that they are well distributed in the country. And also we have to make sure that they actually perform, that they have been trained to perform and, and, and are able to do the things that they need to do. Um, so, sorry. Yeah, so uh, uh, another major challenge that uh, we are facing is in the area of uh, glaucoma. Uh, and here again, as you can see, we had uh, a series of regional workshops during which we discussed the strategy, the, 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 the best strategy for, 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 for glaucoma control in the countries. And we came up with a five uh, prong uh, strategy. Uh, uh, and so that information is there. But uh, unfortunately, uh, to date, we, uh, there, there are very, very few countries that have started addressing uh, the challenge of, uh, of, of glaucoma in a satisfactory way. Uh, the, uh, the other major, major uh, uh, remaining challenge is the in area of uh, reactive errors. On the graph on the, on the left-hand side, uh, uh, you can see that Africa with South Asia and Southeast Asia are uh, among the region that are, uh, where the need is the greatest. Uh, and yet, uh, and, uh, and there again, in the African region, during the workshop, we discuss uh, comprehensive strategies on how to address it, uh, 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 because it has to be a full circle if you want it to be effective. And uh, that information is available, but unfortunately, uh, uh, again, uh, it has not been fully implemented. Thankfully, 
there is a new initiative coming up on the uh, elimination of uh, needless uh, uncorrective refractive errors by 2015. So hopefully that will uh, help. Uh, the last uh, major challenge that I can mention is diabetes. We, whether, whether you look at it uh, on the global level uh, or you look at it country by country, this is an emerging emergency. Uh, Africa is the, 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 the region where uh, with the fastest growth in, 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 in diabetes and its complication. And yet uh, still there's very little in terms of infrastructure. When we assessed the countries, there were some countries, whole countries that had only uh, two or three lasers in the whole country uh, 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 and, and not enough uh, 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 retinal imaging system. It, it things which are essential if you really want to, uh, 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 to control properly uh, uh, diabetes. Um, Oh, sorry, the last, the last aspect of uh, a, a huge challenge is in the area of human resource development. Now, what I'm trying to show in this slide is on the one hand, on the right, is the various uh, 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 key players uh, in human resource development in any country. You have the Minister of Health, you have the Minister of Higher Education, you have professional associations, you have uh, uh, directors of, uh, of training of institutions, and you have other major players. But in Vision 2020, uh, somehow we concentrated only, uh, only two key players were involved, the Ministry of Health and the, uh, 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 in, uh, the international NGOs. That's not enough. Uh, and especially because when you, uh, you uh, international NGOs in many African countries, they concentrated on supporting uh, work at district level, not at the uh, institution, uh, training institution level. As a result, uh, we are still having the same problems uh, uh, with training institutions that are not uh, sufficiently equipped uh, or, and, the, and the teachers are not sufficiently uh, uh, trained uh, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to produce the sort of all round ophthalmologists that we are looking for. Um, lastly, and that's uh, the last part of my presentation. So where do we go from here? Having uh, uh, demonstrated, I hope that yes, we have achieved quite a lot in Vision 2020, but a lot more still need to be done. And, 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 and we have to be creative in doing that. Now, uh, first of all, before I, 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 I make my suggestion, we have to keep in mind that the general environment in which we are working in Sub-Saharan Africa is not likely to change overnight or anytime soon. Africa will continue for some time uh, to be a place where uh, they, they, with, with the highest number of poor, it will continue to be a place where most people pay out of their pocket uh, and where uh, 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 a continent where uh, um, uh, international assistance is highest, as you can see here compared to other regions, which creates some additional problems because with such a high level of dependence on the outside, it means that uh, ownership of the programs uh, are, are difficult uh, because sometimes you have to do what those who are giving you the money tell you to do. And also sustainability is difficult because it means that uh, if uh, for any reason, those who are helping you today are no longer there, you are not, uh, uh, everything may collapse. Uh, and it's even more, uh, more so because uh, as, uh, as you can see from this uh, 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 graph um, um, uh, from the UNDP in 2005, uh, this is uh, 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 where they looked at uh, the, 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 the variability aid over time in Sub-Saharan Africa. And as you can see, it's everything but predictable. And therefore it means that even something that is successful today, if you go back uh, five, five years later, it may not be successful. So we need to insist on sustainability, uh, sustainable approaches as we negotiate with those who are helping us. But even more globally, we need uh, uh, to make sure that because we don't have all the means as those uh, as activists in blindness prevention, we have to make sure that 
we, we are integrated and that uh, into the health systems of the countries because the countries will always be there. The countries are the one who eventually will eliminate uh, blindness uh, in, 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 uh, uh, for their own people. And therefore, the, the, the sooner we, we, we know what they are doing and we get involved in, in all those blocks, uh, health system blocks, the better. Uh, so now, uh, this is my last slide. And uh, uh, my five top priorities as we move forward. The first one will be to support as a matter of top priority, uh, the hundreds of young ophthalmologists who are still graduating even today with very limited skills in surgery. This is not acceptable in a country where many people are still going blind and dying blind uh, uh, because they cannot uh, have surgery. Priority number two will be to help strengthen training institutions by providing them with safer and better training tools like simulators for eye surgery. I think that uh, this is something that we can afford and we know the difference that uh, good training, uh, a safe training can do uh, and produce uh, 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 in terms of impact later when the person is out of the training school. Number three priority is to promote and support the training of subspecialty beginning with the trainers. It is the surest way to produce better all round more skilled ophthalmologists. Priority number four is to help promote the routine use of WHO cataract surgical outcome monitoring tools, which, was, which has been developed for close to 20 years now, and which is still hardly used even by training institution. It's not enough to do uh, thousands or millions of surgery we must make sure that every cataract surgery that is done results in, in site recovery, not just a, 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 a person trained. And lastly, priority number five should be to make sure this time that we don't forget glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, and uncorrected refractive errors. So we have plenty. We can rejoice on what we have done. But the challenge ahead of us are still many, and uh, your support is very much welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. Excellent uh, presentation. Dr. Keigo Lagaldi is involved locally in many positions in improved ophthalmology service in Africa. Dr. Lagaldi is the president of uh, African Ophthalmology Council and a board member of the Middle East African Council of Ophthalmology. Today, he will introduce the insight on strengthening public eye health system in Africa and the prospects. I hope you're all well under these difficult circumstances. I hope you know, COVID-19 is going, not going to affect our thinking along the line of um, able to prevent and treat avoidable blindness because of these uh, circumstances we are in, because it's causing a lot of havoc in terms of we are losing doctors, you know, we are losing family members and uh, economy is going down. I hope probably at some stage we'll be able to stabilize the situation and able to prevent and treat this uh, visual blindness, which is very preventable. Let's start with the eye disease in Africa. Preventable and treatable visual impairments affects estimated about 285 million people worldwide the low and middle income groups being the most affected by about 87%. And we all know that Africa bears most of the burden of visual impairment since visual impairment disproportionately affects the low and middle income countries in relation to the high income region. The socioeconomic factors, poor health system, concomitant human immunodeficiency virus and TB epidemics contributing factors to the burden. It is estimated that 
2,700 per million individual in Africa are visually impaired. And this is very sad and disturbing. The different eye disorders contributing to visual impairment include cataract, glaucoma, trachoma, and refractive error. And nearly 80% of impairments are preventable or treatable. With a aging population and lack of cohesive plans to address the impact of visual impairment on people's productivity, and quality of life, there will be, there would likely be an increase in burden of eye disease in many African countries. Up to 80% of visual impairments are preventable and treatable. And 76% of all Sub-Saharan Africa's cases in 2015 were due to uncorrected refractive error and cataract. Approximately, 26.3 million people in Africa have a form of visual impairment with 20.4 million having low vision and 5.9 million estimated to be blind. Major causes of blindness include, but not limited to trachoma, onchocerciasis, trauma, diabetic retinopathy, childhood and childhood blindness. As we all know, cataracts are the single largest contributing factor of blindness in Africa, and it is responsible for approximately half of the blindness of Africa. And the good news is something that can be treated, in, can be done, something can be done about it. And when it comes to, to, to trachoma, it is declining in many areas. As Professor Ningli has already mentioned about trachoma, what they are doing on their side. But it remains the second largest cause of blindness in Africa. Its prevalence is similar for boys and girls, but investigations indicate it is more active in adult women than men. Glaucoma has a high rate of chronic open angle glaucoma in Africans of a younger age than among white people. In fact, most people impacted by glaucoma are not aware of having it. And that's the sad part. And when they are aware, it's already late. And already half of the eyes are already blind at presentation, which is true. Coming to onchocerciasis, which is liver blindness, as focal distribution at its, its limited to belt stretching from Senegal to Malawi. The other eye disease in Africa that's affecting our people is diabetic retinopathy, which is prevalent in diabetic Africans. Generally, diabetes treatment in Africa is poor. Thus, few diabetes have access to treatment for retinopathy. Looking forward, an improvement of diabetic care would increase life expectancy and is likely more blindness from diabetic care will occur. Other diseases as leprosy, lack of thermos, myopia. Natural refractive error is not a significant cause of blindness. How, however, it is a significant cause of low vision. What are the size of problem that we see in Sub-Saharan Africa? One of the greater challenges to achieve wider health goals is the critical shortage of health workers, which is the heart and soul of any health system. Given the low numbers of ophthalmologists and cataract surgeons in Africa, it is paradoxical why professionals are not overwhelmed with cataract surgery. As a consequence, it is objectively believed that patients presented for cataract surgery are a small proportion of the cataract blind in the community. Factors that prevent people from presenting for cataract surgery or any other eye surgery include, but are not limited to the following. Number one, the cost. Cost of operation as well as other less obvious costs, transportation costs, loss of employment or wages, living expenses while in the hospital and recovery, 
Second one, accessibility of services. Most Africans live in rural areas where ice care services are found in the cities. Third one, knowledge of services. Lack of awareness and understanding prevents many from seeking treatment. Fourth one, trust in, out in outcome. Patient justifiably fear surgery outcome. A few unfavor unfavorable outcome may discourage a community. Cultural and social barriers. Adults with less education, control of time, and of money, social support may be less likely to present themselves for surgery. Coming to the eye health workers in Africa, there are 4.8 million blind persons and 16.6 .6 million visually impaired. Yet, there's less than 1% of global ophthalmologists practicing there. Of the 54 recognized countries, only 13, one, three, meet the requirements of one eye health professional to 55,000 people or patients. The shortage of eye health human resources is compounded by the limited capacity of training institutions. As such, the workforce crisis has even greater impact in Africa region. The lack of sufficient ophthalmologists increases the risk of eye health epidemic in Africa. If sufficient eye health workers of them are not added to the fight against preventable blindness. Glaucoma in Africa. Of the causes of world blindness, glaucoma is the leading cause after cataract and it is devastating and neglected infliction. And we all know that it is irreversible. In Africa, most of the glaucoma in primary chronic open angle glaucoma is the cause. Its prevalence has been conservatively estimated to be 10,000 people for every 1 million in population. Despite the disease high incidence and prevalence, it is only recently that Africa is recognizing glaucoma as a priority eye disease. The size of the problems is humongous. If we, if we can not, not even aware of it, glaucoma is responsible for up to 30% of blindness in the world. And the says suggest it, it is affecting Africans at an unparalleled scale rapidly. Research also suggests that approximately 90% of African patients with glaucoma are unaware they are infected. Due to the Due, due to the urbanization, trained eye care providers are found in urban centers, and the majority of the population lives in the rural areas. There is a serious shortage of trained eye care providers in the continent. Even with 24% of global burden of eye disease being found in Africa, Africa has less than 1% of all ophthalmologists, over 200,000 people lack of public awareness, education about the disease. A call to action in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, glaucoma should be prioritized in the Vision 2020 programs. I know Professor Daniel Itiale already said, we are no longer on the Vision 2020, but yes, he said also, we are still have to go ahead with our Vision 2020 programs. And we should make sure that we are actioning those programs. Educating the population will be the essential to raise the awareness. Providing clinical and surgical training opportunities for African ophthalmologists. And it would be nice and proper to strengthen our relationship between us and China so that we can able to manage this call. We need that. Africa needs the world. I'm so happy that amongst the presenters today are the gurus of Africa, like 
Prof. Daniel Ijali. He has been there for years. Prof. Weyye has been there for years and also supporting Africa as much as we can. I think we still did that. And I thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Lagodi. Very nice. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, let's please welcome Dr. He Xinlu to give us his insights on prevention of eye care developments in the age of a digital era. Dr. He Xinlu received his uh, Dr. Ph, MPH, and MBA degrees from Johns Hopkins University, Bloomberg School of Public Health, and the Carey Business School, respectively. He is now the director of strategic development and the globalization at the Hervision Group. He is also managing the center of vision intelligence at her university. Dr. He. Yes, thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, dear uh, respected guests and uh, panelists, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to share some of my insights regarding to the eye care development in the age of uh, digital health. My name is Xingru. Uh, I'm from uh, Ho University School of Public Health and also the director managing the Center of Vision Intelligence. So uh, in brief 10 minutes, I would like to discuss uh, the four topics, including how the current health status of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, the ongoing challenges, uh, most of the panelists already discussed, so I will briefly go through them. And what can digital health bring at this moment? And what we as a uh, collective uh, stakeholders could do to improve the status of vision health, not, uh, not only uh, the con at, at the continent at where we are located, but also uh, in Africa. So uh, based on the most uh, updated study conducted by Flaxman et al, I've learned that about, uh, uh, about 5 million of blind people are expected to exist in 2020 uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, which constitutes about 12% uh, of the world blindness, as well as 8.3% uh, uh, of the world's uh, uh, moderate to severe vision impairment. Uh, so by looking at this uh, data of uh, uh, stratified by region, including different sections of Sub-Saharan Africa, East Asia, high income North America and the world, we can see compared to the contribution of eye diseases among the population who are above 50 years old, between the year of 1990 and 2015, we could see clearly uh, we've made great uh, progress in eliminating and eradicating trachoma, though there's still a lot, a long way to go regarding to how to control the uncorrected refractive error, as well as cataracts. Uh, but we could see the trend, it's going towards a, a quite a good direction. Uh, then here comes the question that is, uh, uh, what uh, are the ongoing eye care challenges that's, that's facing us, not only in Sub-Saharan Africa? So based on the gathered number of ophthalmologists per million populations, we could see that in China, there are about 21 ophthalmologists per million population there. Uh, Japan, about more than 100. And if we look at uh, many of the Sub-Saharan African countries, it's still quite low. So the challenges not only comes from the human resources, but also the unbalanced medical resources, the lack of eye care access, low affordability, as well as the short of uh, connectivity uh, from the technology perspective. Then what can digital health bring uh, at this time of the, the year? And I would uh, like to separate the topics into three components, including the primary prevention from the education, not only from the, the eye care professionals, as well as to the public. The secondary prevention, including surveillance, monitoring, and screening and also the tertiary prevention regarding to the on-time treatment of not only the communicable, but also the non-communicable eye diseases. 
So for instance, I would like to raise some examples. Uh, some of the digital health solutions in primary prevention, including education towards healthcare professionals, not only using telecommunication technologies, but also using a lot of the smartphone and uh, not even not smartphone, just mobile phone devices using short messages to educate and notify uh, information uh, towards the specialists and towards the public. In the secondary prevention side, uh, I think uh, in the world, there are a lot of uh, a fast, great leap that was uh, focused on developing crowdsourcing technologies to support the surveillance system, especially for communicable contagious eye diseases like trachoma, and also to train artificial intelligence models to screen and predict the trend of not only the outbreak of contagious eye diseases, but also um, the non-communicable eye diseases such as uh, diabetic retinopathy, as well as uh, a lot of the uh, uh, uncorrected refractive error. However, most of the technologies today is, uh, are focused on detecting posterior eye diseases. So there's still a lot of opportunities for all of us to continue to focus and to collaborate and develop uh, the AI uh, tools uh, to look for anterior eye diseases such as the trachoma, but also uh, the middle segment, as well as uh, other glaucoma related uh, uh, algorithms. And from the crowdsourcing perspective, I would like to suggest, for example, uh, for trachoma uh, control, I mean, it's really uh, difficult to uh, use AI to screen for trachoma, not only because of the device's availability, but also its nature uh, that it's infectious. So rather than screening for the disease itself, why not uh, uh, come up with a surveillance system uh, that could be collaborated and supported by the crowd using the existing uh, mobile health technologies to, you know, to, to, to monitor the existence and of the temperature, the development of the outbreak, as well as the development and the population of the flies, for example, that's acting as the vector that's causing uh, one of the biggest risk factors of trachoma. Of course, this is for the uh, communicable disease perspective. And in the tertiary prevention side, we can potentially use a lot of the mobile health technology to support, to, support the, 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 to, the, to, to deliver um, the treatment or the eye drops to uh, the target population using uh, technologies like drones, if possible. But the problem is, I think a lot of the panelists already mentioned the problem is how do we sustain? And yes, we do have the technology. Yes, we do have the uh, human capital. But the problem is how can we scale from there? How can we make the program more sustainable? So rather than making it as a program or a project that has clear starting and end point, why not or how can we transfer a project into a daily operation that can last long and forever. So the key question comes from how can we scale and I think the issue would originate and focus on the next step that is about implementation science. So what can we do and here uh, I constantly ask myself who are we and we are, are we the doctors and optometrists only or are we the hospitals and vision centers that's acting as the, the agencies to do so. Are we the government and public health agencies that's focusing on you know, providing funds, uh, looking for resources? Are we the pharmaceutical companies that's providing the treatments? Are we the health insurance payers to provide uh, affordability to the population or device companies or research institutes or IT tech companies? And I believe we are collective. I think uh, all of what we have discussed should be included in the we that I've suggested. And if we were to mention about the implementation science and regarding to how can we scale the programs that we are developing today, I think it's really important to have this mentality. This is where business and, and, and clinical medicine comes come to, to join uh, together, uh, to have the mentality of a business model. But rather than business, it's more of a public health model by not only considering what kind of technology or digital health technology, uh, not only that, but also 
the products, the treatment, the human capital, you know, what, what kind of value are we providing to what kind of uh, patients and potential patients? And what kind of channels are we going to, to deliver that value and services or treatment to those targeted patients? And what kind of relationship are we to maintain with the target audiences? Yes, uh, that's the outer loop of a agency or initiative. But what kind of activities and what kind of resources are, are needed to conduct these activities to generate, to provide the value and deliver the value to the potential patients? And who are the key partners? I think Dr. Ning Li Wong and, and Daniel have mentioned closely who should be our partners. And I think we've had a lot of good examples of how to work uh, along well together. And the key issue, not only that, that is to maintain a very healthy and organic program or operation by gaining enough revenue and understanding what are the cost structures to make it sustain and make it a long lasting operation. So uh, I would like to, sorry, it's a very short and brief uh, idea suggestion, but I would like to end my presentation with uh, a book that I really like uh, written by the, um, the, the, the uh, creator of uh, The Wired uh, from Kevin Kelly. He mentioned about the inevitable trend that's coming, that's facing us uh, from, year, from this year and to the next decade including cognifying related to how to apply artificial intelligence technologies into our daily lives, but also in clinical care, how we as a healthcare provider to interact with the patients, but also the patients between patients, the data flowing and how, become, how do we become a sustainable uh, eye care organization, how the screening technologies could use to potentially identify uh, potential patients and for those who we need at which location and what kind of accessing technologies can we provide to the target audiences? How can we share our knowledge? How to filter the thousands and hundreds of millions of information every day that we accept from the media? And how do we remix and and collaborate uh, by joining our resources together to uh, implement those technologies and uh, services and how to generate values to our target audiences. Tracking, and we will be able to use our mobile health technologies to track uh, enough uh, daily health information from the potential audiences in order for us to uh, generate uh, precision medicine and clinical services, and to continue to ask questions of ourselves to look for additional answers. And by using cognifying artificial intelligence, we could shorten and reduce the gap between the questions that we ask and the answers that we identify. So thank you so much for your, uh, uh, your attention. And uh, I would like to listen and learn more from all of you and share more ideas from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, our young man, our young generation, Dr. Xin Ru. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, your talk bring us uh, to the new paradise. Yeah, I hope we can use the uh, AR technique to improve our eye health care and give us uh, the opportunity to promoting the air, eye health in the future. Yes, so, thank you. I'm looking forward to the collaboration. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm greatly honored, uh, honored to be a monitor for the next uh, session. Now let's move to the Dr. Tina, a public health specialist with uh, 12 years experience on the, he will give us a presentation to introduce the new progress and the achievement of the public health in the Zambia. Please, Dr. Tina. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And a warm welcome, a warm greetings from Zambia, Southern Africa. Um, my previous uh, 
speakers have been speaking on a global level as well as a regional level. I'm going to speak on a country level. And this is not specifically on um, trachoma, which is which causes blindness, but an overview of the whole neglected tropical diseases in our country in Zambia. Um, the next speaker is going to focus on trachoma and that's another person from Zambia. So Zambia is a small country in Southern Africa. It has approximately 18 million people and we are not, um, we, we, we also are affected by neglected tropical diseases. So what we hope to do as a country is to have a Zambia free of neglected tropical diseases. And of course, to eliminate NTDs in Zambia by 2030. We have various strategies that we've put into place. And of course, like other countries, we conduct mass drug administrations using preventive chemotherapy for the neglected tropical diseases that are endemic to Zambia. And we also have enhanced surveillance of neglected tropical diseases in order to improve management so that all cases are promptly treated. We try to formulate um, health promotion programs that are aimed to preventing and reducing neglected tropical diseases. Some of our other strategic objectives are to sustain the elimination of leprosy. As Zambia, we have uh, achieved elimination of leprosy, so we have enhanced surveillance of leprosy. This is through implementation of uh, treatment guidelines, as well as strengthening coordination between stakeholders uh, involved in neglected tropical disease control and elimination. We try to integrate the neglected tropical diseases control activities into our primary healthcare services. And this has been through production of data capturing tools, as well as including control of neglected tropical diseases in the healthcare of professionals. Uh, this slide shows you the three um, neglected tropical diseases, the endemicity in the country and what drugs we're currently using for mass drug administration as a strategy for elimination. Um, this again shows you the actual endemicity. You will see that we are affected by lymphatic filiasis throughout the country, as well as soil transmitted helminths and schistosomiasis. In terms of lymphatic filiasis, this is endemic in, in 94 districts of our 117 districts in Zambia. We have conducted four rounds of the five, six MDAs in all the 10 provinces. And we hope that we should have um, attained our elimination and we're expecting to do the fifth round this season of 2020 to 2021 in all the 10 provinces. So after that, we're going to do a coverage survey and, do, and also conduct a pretest to see if we have reached the elimination status. However, Sentinel and coverage surveys so far conducted for each of the four rounds have shown a positive trend. This, this is some, um, some pictures that we, we still have case identification of lymphatic filiasis in our communities. We conduct our mass drug administration activities within the community using community health workers as our support staff. In terms of trachoma, trachoma is endemic in 50 districts of 117 districts in Zambia. And we, again, as I mentioned, continue to conduct trachoma campaigns. And this has helped us in confirming elimination in at least uh, 26 districts. And this, is, this implies that 5 million people have been treated through mass drug administration. Uh, we have 18 districts that are due for MDA in 2021. And then um, we continue to provide trichiasis surgeries um, in different districts, and we're yet to do that in 12 districts of our national, uh, under our national trachoma elimination program. In the city, you will see the red zones are showing that we still have active trachoma. And then the dark green zones are showing that they are trachoma free. So all, all in all, we're trying to say that there is a vision for us to eliminate trachoma in our country. And we continue to strive to make sure that we eliminate trachoma um, uh, before 2030. This just shows a picture of one of our community health workers conducting the door-to-door -door MDA for trachoma. We, we must say that we commend our community health workers for supporting the Ministry of Health. Even during this uh, pandemic, we continue to use our community health workers, of course, in the safety of the pandemic. 
Schistosomiasis is another disease that is endemic in Zambia in 103 of our 117 districts. We, we, the estimation of schistosomiasis has so far conducted has been very difficult because of um, different issues to do with implementation and the geographical coverage by province. However, four provinces comprising of 43 districts may benefit for schistosomiasis MDAs by the end of 2021. We will conduct impact and coverage surveys throughout our districts where schistosomiasis is said to be endemic. This slide is showing you some of the trends uh, of therapeutic coverage over the years since we've been doing MDAs for the three, um, so, sorry, for the, for the four diseases. You will see that um, as has been alluded to by the previous speakers, we continue to encounter challenges in some of the diseases, but I must say that some of the diseases are actually doing well in terms of trend for therapeutic coverage, such as trachoma, which is in red, and, um, schist and soil transmitted helmets, which is in green. However, lymphatic filiasis has been performing very well and continues to perform well. And unfortunately for schistosomiasis, as earlier alluded to, we are seeing a decline in coverage of, therape of therapeutic coverage. How are we faring with some of our colleagues or our countries, our neighbors in the, in the region? We are doing quite well as Zambia. If you look at the country coverage index compared to other countries, we are not in green yet, but we are in amber, meaning we're progressing from 25% to about 75% coverage. In terms of our treatment coverage as of 2017, we had quite good coverage for lymphatic pleiasis at 93%, for blinding trachoma at 61%, and for intestinal worms at 58%, and bilharzia at 30%. Um, in terms of the treatment coverage increases or the trends, we have been increasing from 2016 to 2017. You will see that for lymphatic pleiasis, we had people needing treatment at 12.2 million, but those that received treatment were 11.37 million. And for blinding trachoma, we had a treatment coverage that increased from 41% in 2016 to 61% in 2017, meaning that we are trying to make sure that we have the people who need the treatment get the treatment. Similar trends have been seen in um, so transmitted helmets, as well as in Balhazia. So in terms of challenges, I will just focus on a couple of them uh, being coming from the government side. Uh, we continue to have inadequate resources has been alluded to by the previous speakers. And of course, we have to find a way in which we can work with different stakeholders and not just the Ministry of Health or government working with international organizations, but really bringing in the communities to be a part of this fight to ensuring that we eliminate neglected tropical diseases. The uncertainty of weather patterns, we have had some floods in some of the parts of the country, and this has really affected the implementation of our program. And of course, has, as everybody knows, COVID-19, the pandemic has really affected the way we conduct business. Of course, if our major strategy is mass drug administration, it makes it very difficult because then the interaction with the community is very enhanced and hence it becomes a risk for the, for the health workers as well as the community health workers. So this has made it really challenging in conducting and ensuring that we complete all our rounds of mass drug administrations, as well as the coverage surveys that I earlier mentioned. So with that, I would like to thank um, all our partners and make sure that in conclusion, we have reached uh, elimination for, or we're almost reaching elimination for lymphatic pleiasis and trachoma. There is need to find innovative and sustainable interventions to ensure that the gains achieved in the program are not lost. And of course, continued global efforts are needed to ensure that all neglected tropical diseases are eliminated. I would like to thank Orbis for giving me this opportunity to come and speak on this platform. And of course, we will ensure that we continue working together to make sure that we have a Zambia trachoma free by 2030. I thank you everyone and hope to continue listening in. Thank you, thank you for your presentation.
And uh, here is a congratulations uh, to your achievement in your country. And uh, there's good news. You almost uh, come to the elimination of the trachoma. So now let's move to the next speaker. The next speaker will be the uh, presented by the Lucia, who is the country director of the RBC International, Zambia. She has uh, 17 years of the work experience in public health and the development. Today, she will introduce uh, uh, neg uh, neglected uh, tropic disease work on the trachoma. Welcome, please. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, so as introduced, my name is Lucia Nadaf. I am the country director for Orbis in Zambia. And I'm going to briefly share what we have done um, as Orbis Zambia in terms of trachoma um, activities. Uh, briefly, that's just about um, Zambia. Uh, we have a, a prevalence of blindness at 2% for a population of 17.9 million people. Um, that's the number of estimated blind people, um, about 300 and 40,000 people. Uh, the moderate to severe impaired, uh, visual impaired is at 202,846. Um, childhood blindness stands at 0.9% per 1,000 children. And we basically have a problem, a challenge with human resource for eye health with um, one ophthalmologist per 1 million people. A cataract surgical rate stands at 732 per million. And our, for Obis Zambia, the focus in terms of our programming is basically childhood blindness, adult cataract, as well as comprehensive eye health. And we also are looking at human resource for eye health that is basically training. We work in three regions in the country, um, the Northern region um, called the Copper Belt province, where we have a childhood blindness project We've been there for 10 years um, in Northwestern province where we have trachoma prevention activities as well as adult cataract um, programming. And the blue circle, which is basically the capital, this is where we are and implementing comprehensive eye health as well as human resource for eye health. So basically uh, we as Obis Zambia in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and other eye partners have been uh, responding to the trachoma response, the NTD response, um, through trachoma prevention activities and working under the SAFE strategy, having started our work in 2014, and um, the last activities that we had around trachoma was 2019. We've had funding from Standard Chartered Bank through the Seeing is Believing project, as well as um, the UK Aid and the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust to conduct MDA activities and basically in the Northwestern province of Zambia, as well as um, one MDA that we conducted in 2017 in the Copper Belt province of Zambia. And in terms of our activities, we have reached about 1.2 million people with antibiotics. And part of this is also a combination around um, information dissemination and awareness. So this has been talked about in terms of educating our communities. Um, most people don't even know they have trachoma and basically uh, not just strict sticking to trachoma, but also talking to eye health in terms of information and awareness. So this is basically um, a short history um, of our work. Um, 2014, uh, we started our first um, activities around trachoma working on um, MDA for um, one of the regions in the Northwestern province where the uh, TF was 10.4%. Uh, we conducted three MDAs in that region, um, 2014, 15, and 16, and the TF was reduced to 2.78%. We also um, conducted one round of MDA in the Copper Belt province um, where the TF was 14%. And after an impact survey after a year, um, that came down to 2%. Um, so it's still under surveillance. Um, 2018, we did receive a grant and conducted three MDAs again in Northwestern province in three other districts. 
and we are waiting for an impact survey, uh, impact survey results in that one as well. And unfortunately, the first district where we started, where we, uh, the TF came down to 2.78, now has uh, active trachoma prevalence of 5.8. And the plan is to conduct another MDA in, in that region. And that is just a summary of our performance where we have, I talked about having reached about 1.2 million people and an overall performance of about 90, 98% across the two provinces. This is just our, the recognition for our work, uh, working with the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust and working with other partners within the country uh, where we were awarded uh, recognition for our work. Thank you, that was very brief. Thank you. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation and about the work done in the Zambia. Last but not the least, let's uh, please welcome Dr. Alameya, Alameya Ho, Sisa, to uh, summarize the, the trachoma elimination in southern Ethiopia. He is the uh, OBIA country's director and the senior ophthalmologist. He's uh, one of the leading trachoma experts globally and the stronger advocate for the comp uh, comprehensive eye care to help uh, improve the life around the world. Also, he is a member of the international Coalition for Trachoma Control and the National Trachoma Task Force. Today, he will share the progress in the elimination of the trachoma in the southern Ethiopia with us. Please. Thank you very much for the kind uh, introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, everybody uh, around the world. Uh, today, I'm going to share you a very highlight of Orbis's work in our uh, attempt to eliminate uh, blinding trachoma. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Fkrab to give us a general highlight of what has been uh, done uh, over the years in, in trachoma elimination. Uh, Orbis trachoma work is uh, focusing in southern nation, uh, national cells and people's region. It's located in the southern part of the country. Uh, it is the third largest uh, uh, region uh, in terms of population and geographical area. And we have been uh, implementing trachoma control uh, program in the region for the last 22 years now. Uh, so far we have administered, so I, I will go to to present in uh, the WHO recommended safe uh, strategy uh, way. So I will focus on the A part first. So far we have administered 74.4 million doses of Zitromax across uh, the two decades. And uh, over the years, we, we have been expanding to uh, cover the whole of region. And as it stands now, uh, we are 100% coverage of the, the region in terms of uh, safe implementation. As you can see on the map, over the years, we have uh, steadily increasing the MDA coverage of endemic districts. And uh, in 2020, uh, the graph shows a slight uh, decline in terms of MDA coverage. And that's because uh, we are doing a lot of uh, impact surveys. And based on the result of the impact survey, we may be able to continue in some districts and we may declare uh, elimination of uh, TF uh, in, in some of the, the districts. Uh, the large bulk of uh, our MD has been uh, distributed over the last five years as we expand to achieve uh, geographic coverage. In terms of trachoma test three cases, we have performed uh, 168,773 uh, uh, TT surgeries. Uh, our trainings are based on uh, the WHO recommended uh, mid-level eye care worker training for tr trachoma trichiasis management. And uh, we have conducted these numbers through those mid-level eye care workers. So all the continuing education, quality assurance, and assessment has been in, in place. Uh, to do uh, tr trachoma trichiasis surgery, uh, we have to establish primary eye care units. 
These are the link between communities and secondary and primary eye care units. And we train nurses to provide tracheostomy surgery and also train community members in the identification and referral of uh, those cases. So uh, in 2020, we have 260 uh, functional primary uh, eye care units providing uh, tracheostomy surgery on, on a regular basis. Uh, about the FND activities, uh, I think we have done 126 uh, communal latrines, mainly in schools and in public gathering areas. And these are model con constructions that uh, community members could take the lessons and come up with their own uh, version of latrines, be it communal or, or private. Uh, we also focus on uh, water development. So far we have uh, protected uh, 36 water point, uh, protected and uh, create networkings to, to provide water to community members. I think the WASH partners are significant in this regard by providing uh, resources, experiences, and uh, other required uh, technical areas. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, researches, I think uh, we conducted more than 100 trachoma-related uh, researches, uh, and we have published significant part of those research on, on peer-reviewed journals. We also conduct uh, baseline and impact assessment based on the WHO recommended uh, global trachoma mapping uh, project and also the recently adopted uh, tropical data systems, particularly in terms of uh, conducting trachoma impact surveys. And we also uh, do a lot of operational researches, particularly in trying to improve uh, tracheostomy surgery because uh, recurrence is a major challenge in terms of achieving uh, the management of uh, trachomatous tracheases. Uh, having said that, over the years, uh, more than 26 districts have achieved the WHO elimination target, particularly for the active infection. And uh, as we speak, our team is doing a lot of trachoma impact surveys, and that result will tell us how uh, successful we are. This is just a high level summary of our trachoma control activity in Ethiopia, but generally uh, we are implementing comprehensive eye care services ranging from community level to tertiary level eye care facility, providing human resource development, infrastructure support, and also working research uh, to uh, influence uh, policy in, in eye care and bringing uh, you know, NTDs and eye care into the development agenda. With that, I conclude my presentation and thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, all the speakers here give the marvelous uh, presentation and uh, share the experience from the different uh, countries and the regions. So the OVA meeting will come to the end. I would like to invite the Dr. He, OVA co-chair, to make the conclusion and the summary. Dr. He, please. Uh, nearly, uh... Before closing the session, we have uh, two questions remaining on our question board. Okay. Uh, one is for Professor Nili. Nili, can you yeah. read, answer these questions? What is the questions? Uh, so, uh, Nili, thank you for your presentation. As we know, Africa as a obia have a highest incidence of a trachoma in the world. How is China going to help Africa eliminate trachoma as in Africa, as it has been done in China? Is it human resource development, infrastructure, or any other thing? Thank you. Okay. Uh, it is a good question. So we just think about to summarize the experience the technique we used in China. And we really like to share the experience technique with our friend from the Ethiopia. Please contact me by email. And right now our teams will work up on the summary of the trachoma elimination, the experience and the technique from the China aspect. So we will send what you like, the experience, the technique, 
maybe we can have some kind of uh, uh, surgical instruments for the trichosis uh, surgery. So that is my answer. Thank you, Nili. Um, here's a comment on the question board uh, from Dr. Raymond Inno Bakhari. Uh, blinding glaucoma is still a public health issue in Nigeria, especially among citizens living in the north part of Nigeria. I want to combine these comments with the following discussion, focusing for how to integrate multiple resources to address NTD in Africa and strengthen eye health capacity. Um, I hope uh, our panelists have a discussion from now on, like uh, five minutes, then we have a summary of this meeting together with Ning Li. Okay. So maybe some doctors from the African can give the answer to him. I, um... Uh, this is Daniel here. Uh, I can quickly address uh, that uh, problem. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> the, I think this has been an ongoing challenge uh, in Africa uh, because uh, when we started Vision 2020, uh, I think it was good to have an initiative that was a separate uh, initiative because that's the only way that we could... Uh, uh, quickly get some momentum and, um, and, and bring the visibility to the national level. But what we have also discovered now that um, uh, the, 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 the um, eye health activities and blindness prevention activities cannot continue to go uh, in isolation. Because when you look at the country level, the resources are, are limited uh, for the various interventions. And, uh, uh, and at the same time, uh, in many countries, uh, prevention of blindness activities has depended uh, sometimes up to 80% only on the input of uh, NGO, international NGOs and uh, other international partners, which is not a sustainable way uh, to look at it. Uh, so we all understand now that uh, if we have to sustain our activities, we need to, to, to seek uh, how to link with <clears throat> other forces within the countries. And I showed you one of the diagrams where we have many more players uh, in, in, at every level, whether you talk about uh, training, uh, not only uh, the Ministry of Health or NGOs <clears throat> support training, there are many others who are involved in training and we have not really uh, 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 hooked with them uh, enough so far. And the same is true when it comes to funding. So uh, I think the challenge is for all of us to become creative. Creative. Thank you, Daniel. Anyone have comments regarding how to integrate multiple resources to address NTD and other uh, blind causing problems in Africa and the strengthened uh, eye health capacity. I got uh, a message from uh, Alex Yabiu. Um, he comments that China is advanced in terms of technology. My question is how we can how can China assist Africa with the technology in eye health? Okay. I gave some comments on this because China do have advanced technology now, especially the, the cloud-based internet solution for remote early diagnosis by screening. There are a lot of uh, devices uh, available, use less professional cost effective and no limits for distance. That's especially useful for using in the sub uh, served area with less ophthalmology and optometry, 
which can be really good, widely can be well used uh, in Africa region. Um, I write down my email there and uh, I'll ask uh, the social responsibility department, the director, uh, <coughs> Helen, she will connect to you to see what kind of help you need and what we can. We'll try our best to supply any possible help. Thank you. Um, maybe, there are several. Uh, maybe uh, the doctor Xin Rong, he has some suggestions for these questions. Xin Rong? Yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Ning Li. Uh, thank you, Alex. I think uh, before we can discuss further, I think uh, it'll be better to, to uh, complete your question more in detail. For example, when you say technology is pretty broad and uh, about how can China can assist Africa, I think it's pretty broad too. Uh, so if you could kindly um, more uh, exploit or more uh, write your question more in detail, for example, what kind of technology are you saying uh, existing devices or uh, are you more talking about mobile health technologies or applications or more like uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, algorithms? I think uh, once you list out all your needs, I think it'll be really, really, uh, really helpful for us to understand uh, how exactly we can exchange our uh, uh, more detailed, uh, you know, collaboration efforts uh, in the future. Sorry, I couldn't answer your question. It's pretty broad. Uh, so please uh, forgive my uh, straightforwardness, <laughs> but please uh, let me know. Uh, if you can reach Wei, uh, you could reach me. So uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you more. Uh, but uh, in, in, in any, in, in any uh, aspect, I, I think uh, this, this type of, uh, you know, joint uh, collaboration will be very important. Uh, but please bear in mind uh, that uh, I, I think it, it comes back to the business model that, that, that I presented will come back uh, all the time. Uh, that is how we can jointly uh, help each other will be the key question. So it's, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to talk to you more if necessary. Thank you. Uh, Singrook, is it possible for me to add, uh, uh, to make a quick comment uh, following uh, what you've just said? I think it's important that uh, we realize there's a lot that is being said right now in terms of uh, new technologies, artificial intelligence. Uh, I think what uh, most, um, um, uh, 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 in most places in Africa, what we need in priority is actually uh, to build an infrastructure. And uh, having, vis having visited uh, some of the infrastructure in, uh, in, in, in China, I think that that's uh, an area where mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can help us uh, the most. Uh, but it will mean on our part that we identify uh, those uh, people with, uh, who are likely to, to be trained, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to be empowered, so that they can come back. And then with your help, uh, 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 start establishing those. There's a lot that can be done right now uh, in, in many parts of Africa, but we can't do it in a piecemeal mm -hmm. manner. You need a system, you need an infrastructure, and you need a vision uh, 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 for short, mid, and long term. I see. No, that's a good point. Thank you, Daniel. And I think it'll be, I think there's also a, even, even, even though Africa might be, might be the late coming, uh, group in regarding to how to establish the infrastructure it's actually i think it's there's there's a certain advantage for for africa and for, for many african countries because uh you can witness uh, the development of how other countries what what kind of mistakes other countries have made you know try to avoid the same mistakes mm -hmm. in order to establish a, a african model alone uh, with a specific unique model that could be established there. And uh, I'm looking forward to working closely with, with everyone, everyone in the field of eye care to, to uh, establish an African model of uh, blindness prevention. Yes, uh, time is passing. Uh, the ultimate goal of uh, 
medical research and education is to serve the society and get rid yeah. of uh, unis. Today, we keep our appointment for the bright future. Our common ideal and belief enable us to close the space, gather in the online forum, share experiences and seek a common interest for the eye health of uh, African people. I believe that what we shared at the meeting today will become the driving or force for the innovation and the development of eye health in African country in the future. Thanks again to experts for your experiences, works and suggestions for the development of eye health in African countries. We expect to jointly move forward to build a brighter future and make a new and greater contributions to the high quality development of global eye health. Thank you. Professor Ning Li, please I provide your insights on this meeting and close our summit. Ning Li. So again, thank you every, everyone. Thank you every participants and thank you all contributions and we have a very good time to share the experience. So I hope in the near future, we can hear the good news from the different countries and the regions. Let's hands in hands together to fight in the blindness in your country and our country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nili and all colleagues. As we all know, the city tower called the Window of the World is located at Shanghai, China. It is a landmark in China. Let's celebrate the World Neglected Tropical Disease Day and see the lightning of the tower. The